Hi everyone, welcome back to Asperger's From The Inside. You're here with Paul. So today's patron's choice video is Asperger's and giftedness. Is it a blessing or a curse? So very interesting question today. Um, I thought I'd start out, obviously, so firstly, obviously it's both. Um, and one thing to notice is that no matter how good you are at one thing, it doesn't take away from the fact that you struggle in a different area and vice versa. If you, no matter how much you struggle in a certain area, it doesn't, it doesn't take away from your talents. So um, I thought I'd start with uh, the good stuff, I suppose. The, the blessings are much more obvious than the curses. Um, and then I'll move on to some of the more subtle effects of what happens when you're gifted um, in a certain area. So to start off with, I can't really talk about the blessings of being gifted without mentioning the word privilege. It is a huge privilege to be gifted intellectually, especially in the kind of uh, academic subjects that um, our society values very highly. So what I mean by that is if you are able to be good at school growing up, that's a huge advantage that sees you through, gives you a lot of additional opportunities um, in life that you would not otherwise have. So the, the fact that I personally, for example, have always um, done fairly well at school allowed me to compensate for a lot of other things, a lot, of, a lot of other areas in my life. And that, that's a huge privilege that I've been able to merit my way through school and getting scholarships and going to university and getting a well-paying job as an engineer. None of that would have been possible if I were not um, gifted with my, with my intellectual capacity, essentially. So um, sometimes um, I advise people with getting a job. Um, my video on good jobs for Aspies, I think I mentioned this in that, that if you can find a job that is predominantly based on how well you can perform, then that advantages a lot of us because if you, you can pick an area where you're going to perform well, and then that those results can't be argued with. You can't be managed out of an organization if you're doing extremely well and you're the top performer. It makes it much, much harder for people to do that, even if they don't like you. So um, a, a big privilege of doing well and performing well means that even if people don't really like you or get along with you, they have to respect you because of your work. Um, so uh, another example of this is in things like sports. So I used to play tennis when I was growing up. And when you're on the court, what matters most is your skill playing the game rather than your social skills or your background or your ability to speak or any, any ability that is not, not directly focused on that particular thing isn't as important in the moment. So being gifted in a certain area has a huge privilege of people not being able to ignore your results in that area. Um, Temple Grandin also is famous for giving this advice um, around in the employment sphere. She herself says that she used her portfolio to get her foot in the door. I might be awkward, I might be a bit weird, but here, look at my drawings. These are amazing and they are undeniably amazing. So as I mentioned, there are a lot of, a lot of privilege and a lot of opportunities that come from being able to perform in areas that are highly valued um, in society. Um, so that's a bit of, uh, the blessings, I suppose. Um, as we start to move into some of the more subtle side effects of that, it's worth mentioning that a lot of us on the spectrum uh, have perfectionist tendencies. And my personal theory on this is that it's often because we try to overcompensate for our failings with what we're actually really, really good at. And I know for me personally, I somehow picked up this idea that I need to be competent at things and I need to be, need to be self-sufficient and I need to be able to perform well. And if I can do all those things, then everything is gonna be okay. 
which means that if I, if for any reason I am not able to perform, then suddenly my whole self-worth as a person seems to go out the window, um, which is a problem because everyone wants, wants to be accepted and know that they're worthy. And when I feel like I'm not able to perform, when I lose that, that special privileged giftedness place, then all of a sudden it feels like that, that rock that I was depending on has been taken away from me, um, which is, 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 a, is a big challenge. Um, so for a lot of us, um, another thing that happens if you're gifted and uh, high functioning, for example, if you appear to be doing really well, you've got a job, you can speak, you can articulate yourself um, and, and various other things that allow you to get along in the world. It's, it, it becomes harder and harder for other people to see that you actually do still need help in certain areas. So um, uh, Yen Perkis um, on, came along to the Autism Explained online summit a couple of years ago um, and shared about mental health, um, with, especially with gifted students. And for, for their story, it was a big part of their story that because they were doing very well academically, the whole mental health side of the equation just wasn't really, wasn't adequately addressed. Um, the thought being, if you're doing well at school, well, then everything must be okay. If your grades start slipping and you start not coping at school academically, then something must be wrong and we need to, we need to help this person and support this person. Whereas hopefully it's fairly obvious by now that if your grades are doing well, that does not necessarily mean that you're coping. It does not necessarily mean that you're coping socially, that you're coping mentally. Maybe you need a significant amount of help mentally or socially or emotionally, but because your grades are still there, it's harder for other people to see the help. So that's that's definitely um, a curse that, that comes along with being gifted. People are less likely to see when you need help. Um, another big one socially is uh, tall poppy syndrome, for lack of a better word. It means that when you do well, other people who wish they could do as well as you get jealous and start treating you worse and start trying to cut you down, cut you back down to size. Now, when you're an autistic person who is just naturally gifted in a particular area and you excel without even trying, then it's actually damaging to try to not outperform your peers and try and stick within the bounds um, of, of what everyone else considers sort of a normal level of ability. Um, um, I explain it that I, I was born to stand out in some areas. I can't, I literally lack the ability to be normal. But when I do stand out, it makes people jealous and they want to bring me back down because they, because they, they feel like, um, I don't deserve it or something. Um, another interesting curse that comes along with being gifted is that no matter how good you are uh, in your job or earning money or earning respect, th the phrase that money can't buy love is really true. And no matter how well you perform at your job, you can't fix the deficit in building relationships if you find it challenging to main, to build and maintain relationships. So um, again, you might be successful in one area of your life, but I've met too many people um, who find themselves later in life very al so alone and isolated with broken relationships and without the ability to um, repair them or start new ones because it's a lot easier to, to lean on your abilities when you're younger than it is when you're older. Um, in my personal example, uh, in my personal life, for example, um, going to school, going to university, getting a graduate position, getting an engineering job, they were all really easy when, you know, when I was in my 20s. They become a lot harder uh, later in life. So human beings are predominantly social um, we value and make decisions based on social things a lot more than on logical um, or rational things. So it means that if you're, if you can't 
make those connections with your peers, if you feel alienated from your peers, it becomes much more difficult to actually maintain their respect over time. And eventually, even if you're really good at something, what it ends up doing is alienating you. I feel like I'm talking a little bit high level at the moment, so let me give you a really, really concrete example. Um, I've always been fairly coordinated, right? I play tennis, I can do all the coordinated physical things fairly easily. Um, and one of the things that we used to do at the tennis club when you weren't actually on the court is play table tennis in the clubhouse. Um, and no matter which uh, club you went to, it was very common that they'd have a table tennis table. So I ended up getting very, very good at that in my amateur level. And I ended up just for fun starting to play with my left hand because that was fun for me. That was a challenge for me. Eventually, people stopped wanting to play with me. I would play with my left hand and they would feel insulted that I could beat them with my left hand and therefore they didn't want to play anymore. And those words, uh, I don't want to play anymore. People didn't want to play with me. This, these are really deep-seated emotional words for me because I feel like from my earliest memories, I couldn't figure out how to get the other kids to play with me. And being very good at something alienates you in a sense in that way because if because no one likes to lose and if I'm the best at something then no one wants to play with me anymore and that's extremely alienating. Um, do you want to know what the um, biggest insult, not insult, there was a word that people in high school used to use to describe me and they didn't realize how painful this word was for me. And they were, they were joking, they were my friends, they weren't trying to hurt me, but this particular word really stung, really stung. And the worst part about it is that there was no one I could talk to about it who could understand why this word hurt so badly. The word that they used to describe me was perfect. They called me Perfect Paul because I was good at so many different things. And when they used that word, I felt so incredibly alone because it meant that no one wants to play with me. People don't like to lose, and so they don't like to play with people who are better than them. I've always been extremely competitive, and I love nothing more than to be beaten at something. If I can find someone who can beat me at something, it means I can try as hard as I like and I'm still gonna lose and, I'm, and I can actually learn and get better. Um, and being super competitive doesn't really help in that area anyway. So I might leave it there. Um, I guess the, the final message is no matter how good you are in one area, it does not take away from the challenges that you have in another area and vice versa. So um, if you find that um, in a lot of your life, you're you're, you're, you find it's really challenging, it, that does not take away from your skills and vice versa. I think I said that already. So I'm gonna wrap up before I talk for too much longer. Um, thank you to everyone who voted for this patron's choice video. Um, and if you'd like to become uh, a patron of this channel, you can, uh, and, and have your say in next month's video, you can become a cup of coffee supporter of this channel for as little as a dollar a week. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you another time.